Okay. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to do a little soldering. Uh, I actually was in the middle of a project uh, putting together two male ends of a electrical cord. Uh, there's an easier way to do this if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, you know, I need to have a male to male end, and if you're not sure about how that works with the male versus the female and all that, you probably need to ask a mom or dad or a close friend of the family. But my uh, project is that I have to put two male ends together, and uh, at Lowe's or Home Depot, they would sell uh, the plug yeah, that, you know, you don't have to uh, solder anything. You just go ahead and put the wires in there and uh, screw everything on there. But uh, I'm not sure that those are open right now. And this is a zombie apocalypse project. So I want to just go ahead and, you know, solder a couple of wires together. thought it would be a good project to show everyone how to solder. Um, and there's a couple of tricks, and it'll help out the soldering. It makes it a lot easier and makes the solder joint stronger. So uh, I started doing two of them, and I'll zoom in here in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and hit the third with some solder. And there's, like I said, a few tricks, so I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and make you aware of those. So let me uh, move in here, and uh, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I was going to mention just a moment ago that I had my soldering uh, goggles on, and it's really a necessity to have soldering goggles because the solder can splash and if it hits you in the eye you're going to be in a world of hurt and I don't think that they can repair that. So always wear your soldering goggles. I'm trying to zoom in and show you these are the solder joints that I just did. The black wire on electrical wiring is the hot and uh, the white is the neutral, that's the return, and then the green is the ground. So that's the one that still needs to be soldered the green is a safety ground. So uh, it's a little bit different than electronics because usually we use red to be our positive and uh, the uh, black is the return or the ground and um, you know this is a little different in electrical wiring from an electrician's point of view from electrical house wiring. So what you can see if hopefully it's not too blurry is that the wire is just a little tiny bit twisted around. Now you don't want to go crazy on that. Well, I put a paper towel, a roll of paper towel, behind the uh, wiring just to give us a little bit of a better focus. Uh, let me take these apart. You can see possibly how I twisted it. What If I had a uh, you know, straight section here, I don't want any stray wires. So you just don't twist it much, but just kind of get them you know, so that they're held together pretty well on both ends. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of wrap it around maybe once or twice. And that's just like I say a little trick that I've picked up over the years just to help with the uh, you know the mechanical aspects of it. You gotta kinda work at that a little bit but there you go. Alright so that should hold it pretty well. So that uh, once it's you know secured like that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a little bit of soldering paste and the soldering paste is another problem like we were talking about wearing the goggles uh, soldering paste can be corrosive, so you have to make sure to wash your hands after you use soldering paste. You know, never have a sandwich or anything uh, without washing your hands because if this stuff gets into your stomach, it's kind of a nasty thing. And I try to keep it off of my fingers as much as possible. You know, and I'm using a screwdriver here to go ahead and apply it. And what the soldering paste does, it's going to go ahead and clean the conductor. That's what its purpose is, cleans the conductor. And also, in my opinion, allows for the uh, solder to flow it a little bit better. It gives it a nice, you know, clean flow, and then it allows it to uh, adhere to the material that you're trying to solder. And I'm using a little bit of a thick solder because these wires are pretty good size. They're, I'm not uh, an electrician, but I would think they're probably about 10 gauge or so. So they're um, 10, you know, 10, 12 gauge. They're pretty, pretty good wires. They're kind of thicker than a regular electronic wire. Uh, these, by the way, were from computers, so I'm putting a couple of computer cords together, male to male end for a project. All right, now, what I'm going to do, and this is going to be a little bit of a, uh, kind of an amateurish film here, but let me take this over here. What I'm going to show you, that's my soldering station, and I have that soldering station set so that if you can see these LEDs, they want to, I want to put it just where it's popping into the red a little bit. So that says, you know, if it's in the red, you're a little too hot. 
I don't want to keep it that way, but I'm going to put it just up into the red a little bit for this little project. Now the next thing you always do on the soldering station is you take your soldering tip and make sure that the soldering tip is nice and clean. It's got to always have a nice shiny end to it. And if it doesn't, you put a little bit of solder on there. And in, in any case, you always clean it off on the sponge. There's a little sponge on top. And clean it off. Not a lot. Don't keep it in there for a long period of time. But you rub it, rub it top and bottom, and now we're ready to go. So let me go ahead back over to our connection that we want to make. And hopefully it's somewhat in view. Uh, by the way, before I'm soldering it, you notice there's a little while uh, there's a uh, heat shrink on here there's a heat shrink that's a larger diameter than the wire and we'll shrink it by applying heat to it later see that's going to go over the top of that later so that it'll you know make it uh, good for safety but let me back that off now let me get my soldering tip I'm going to wipe the soldering tip clean I'm going to go ahead and get my solder and here's another little trick that you know they won't tell you uh, is the proper way to do it but this is how you do it you put just a little dab on the tip not much just a little tiny dab like that and then what you're going to do is you're going to hold that to the solder that you want to connect and let it heat it up and now put some more solder around near that tip and roll it out on both ways here so that we can get that connection good so that's basically how we're doing a solder joint. Now uh, after that cools and I don't want to touch it for a while I want it to cool and I didn't put a big gob of solder on either by the way just enough to make it so that it's connected from one wire to the other and I'm gonna let it cool for quite a while and that way it'll ensure that it's gonna make a nice hard solder joint. So what we're gonna use to um, shrink the heat wrap it's just a heat gun that you could get at any home uh, remodeling store, you know, it's used for home fix-up projects. And uh, we're going to take those connections that we just made. We're going to put the heat shrink around where the uh, connections are here so that we could insulate them for safety. Sometimes they give you a little bit of problem. There we go. And it uh, looks like we're pretty good there. Okay. So now we get the soldering iron, or the, uh, the heat gun, I should say, and put it on the high setting. Give it a little while to warm up. By the way, it gets real hot, so you certainly don't want to put your hands near it. I just want to make sure it's hot enough. That seems to be pretty good. Then you get it and don't touch the heat shrink, but you just go around it and blow that hot air on there for a little while. And that will do it. And then when you shut the heat gun off, again, that's going to stay hot for a really long time. So you have to be careful, you know, where you put it. Make sure that you're not going to burn down the house. Put it uh, also somewhere where there's no pets or anything, you know, because, I mean, that would certainly injure them. And that's going to probably take, you know, a good five minutes to cool down. And, and the same thing's true with these uh, wires. I don't like to touch them for a a couple of minutes it's just so everything cools down and hardens so that we have a good uh, mechanical bond and that's that's good okay so there we go that's a little hard to see on the camera because of the, all the junk on my bench but uh, so now we have the three wires that are connected together soldered pretty good and then um, what I'll do I there's probably better ways to do it but what I'll do is I'll just wrap some uh, electrical tape around in a way that it's going to separate each of the conductors and then put uh, electrical tape all around the whole thing to make it a little bit more watertight. But with the heat shrink on there, that's pretty good the way it is right now. All right, so that's how to solder, you know, big soldering jobs. Uh, we'll go next into how you would solder uh, circuit board uh, components onto a circuit board, and that, that's a whole different uh, way to do things. So we're looking at um, a blank... PCB. This is a really nice uh, circuit board that I got from a company. Uh, boy, I can't remember their name offhand. Uh, PLBPCB, I think it is. 
located in China. They did a very, very nice job. They sell these circuit boards for about $2 a piece. Um, prices have probably changed a little bit since I bought this, but the bottom of it is all called a ground plane. It's just the copper is uh, across everywhere except where there are connections, and that helps with uh, keeping noise down, you know, keeping RF interference down when you have a ground plane like that. It's a double-sided board. You could solder on either side. Uh, you know, I, I really am using the top side most for populating it with components. And one of the big components that we have to put in there is an Arduino. There you go. So what I like to do first, though, is I'm going to put a socket because uh, once you put an Arduino in there, if you ever want to take it out, you know, you can put the socket in there and it's much simpler to go ahead and, um, you know, reprogram it if you'd like at some future joint, they, or at some future point, I should say. The um, Arduino, again, it's got a little marking on it to show you where the pins are. Pin number one is going to match with my pin number one. And, you know, you could plug it into the socket. And once you do, you know, you have to add a solder, you know, and you solder the bottom, and you have to add a couple of parts to make the Arduino work as a standalone processor without the Arduino board. This is my own circuit board, you know. But you have to add a couple components. You have to add a crystal, and it's a 16 megahertz crystal oscillator that's going to, you know, give you your clock signal for this thing. And there's also two capacitors that you have to put on there to filter out the uh, clock signal so that it's not... Uh, you know, kind of staticky, and um, so that's good. But I'm not going to put that in there to, to, today. I'll show uh, just to put the resistor in here for now. Just do kind of a quick uh, run through on how you would, you know, populate the board with parts. Well, we're zoomed in a little bit better. Uh, I should also mention this red uh, mat that I'm working on is a static mat, and uh, you know, this keeps static electricity from damaging components that are sensitive to static charges and uh, you wear a wrist strap around your around your arm and uh, there's a, another part of a, a wire that connects to ground so this is sort of a grounded surface that I'm working on. Alright so here's the board uh, let me go ahead and show you this is a little bit tough to get at the soldering station with the camera here but uh, I think that'll work okay so I have the uh, again the soldering temperature just slightly in the red, just peaking slightly. And I'm going to use a little bit of a thinner solder than what I used before because this is a, going to be a smaller solder joint. Now it's up to you if you want to use solder paste. You really don't need to on a brand new board. Um, you, I'll show you with and without, but you just put a tiny bit of solder paste on there if you wanted to use it on a newer board. Um, and of course with soldering, you know, again, I've got the glasses on. You got to be real careful not to touch that or that will really burn you because it's up, uh, boy, I'm not even sure how many degrees Fahrenheit. It looks like 630. 630 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, you don't want to touch that. All right, so um, the tip is nice and cleaned. It's got to always be clean. That's the first thing. And then what I'm going to do, here's the trick. What I'm going to do, and they taught us this in NASA soldering school, you put just a tiny, 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 little dab. I mean that's even too much but you put that on there, you hold it at the base and then you roll a little bit of solder around there. Let it let it go for a second and then you come up with it. Okay and you don't touch it for a couple of seconds and you're gonna have a pretty good solder joint. Uh, it's a little hard to see because of that solder paste is kinda nasty. It has to be cleaned off after you use it. Now what I just did, I cleaned my solder tip again on the sponge real quickly, brushed it twice, top and bottom, and now I'm going to do it without the solder paste. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the soldering just a little teeny dab, not a glob, that's really important, just a tiny dab, and there we go, that's even too much there. But again, that causes a heat bridge. That's called a heat bridge because now what it'll do is it'll transfer the heat real fast. Alright, so I put that on the base, and I go ahead and I add a little bit of extra solder, pull it up after it heated up a little bit, and there's my solder joints. Again, let them, let them stay there for a few minutes without touching them. Don't move the wires. Don't clip them right away. Give them a little bit of time to cool. And then uh, 
what what it should look like and it's going to be almost impossible to see on the camera I'm sure but let me go ahead and clip them uh, what it should look like and again so you always got to have your goggles on when you're clipping wires because you don't know where those little wires are going to go yep could hit you right in the eye so I would clean the solder paste off with alcohol and a q-tip the other one I don't need to worry about because I didn't use the solder paste on I don't know how well you can see that it should look like a Hershey's kiss oh okay there we are see it it's gonna be kinda of hard to see uh, there that's sort of a good view there the one uh, that wasn't using solder paste you can see it's kinda of, it's minimal soldering and it should be shaped kinda of like a Hershey's kiss like a concave kind of a shape not convex if you have a big blob of solder that's convex you take that off and try again so then the question is well how do you take it off okay because once it's soldered there might be a little bit tricky to take off so let's go into that um, I'm gonna have to show you a couple methods this is one method this is a method that uses a solder sucker and the solder sucker is um, you know kind of a vacuum pump that you put on where that solder connection is that you want to remove so let me find that here on the camera so we'll take the one that's not solder paste and we'll remove that again what I do is I want to have the soldering station up pretty hot <clears throat> slightly higher in the red for desoldering I'm gonna go on at a very low angle very low angle and heat that solder joint up well I push the pump in to make it create a vacuum then I stick that on top and pop it and you might have to do that twice I got some of it off but not all uh, let's see here okay there we go all right so that does it see and that removes the solder and now you could go ahead and lift that out of the uh, you know out of the hole there now because it's desoldered uh, and the second way to desolder is with solder yeah. braid what you always want to do on the solder braid is if there's any soldered portion that's toward the end go ahead and clip it off we want to have a nice shiny copper braid we don't want to have the solder at the end and I always use me personally I, I always use the solder paste so I'm going to take some solder paste and you know kind of dip that in there not a lot but just a little bit and then I'm going to take my uh, soldering station make sure that it's up a little hotter than normal just like before and I'm going to take the uh, uh, solder wick and I'm going to put it down really low uh, low angle on the soldering iron and I'm going to hold it on there pretty tight and you could probably pop that thing right out of there Here, see I just came right out so whoops a little bit hot but uh, say so notice that there's no uh, resistor there anymore so the resistor kind of fell on the floor the floor here somewhere um, <clears throat> so here it is there's the resistor and uh, you know I just pulled it out of there because sometimes uh, with these small diameter holes it's a little bit tough if you take the soldering iron away and expect that you got all the solder out of there there might be just a little bit inside the hole there that might keep it locked in place so I try to remove the component you know when at all possible while it's still hot so uh, it's hard to see I understand uh, on a on this camera um, and it's also better for people to do it in practice uh, practice practice you know that's really how you get good at soldering and it's I think it's a good skill to know how to do you know um, you'll have to do it on your own obviously but uh, at this point but um, you know be sure to practice 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 use the safety and uh, that's good to put on a resume you know as one of the skills that you're you're good at is that you're uh, you're good at soldering and desoldering you know and, and, and there's better more expensive ways of doing it than just having uh, a temperature controlled soldering station like I have there's you know very professional uh, sod desoldering and soldering stations available but they cost a lot of money and this is good enough for a home Arduino hobbyist all right well thanks a lot